Welcome back to Search Engine Daily, where Paul just <laughs> discovered where the orange box is located. Under T, not under O. Because O, oh, that would make too much sense. Yeah, so all the games to start with the word T, like mm. The Walking Dead, The Turing Test, The Witcher. I could go on. You got the idea? <laughs> they're, all, they're all under T. Not under their, you know. Okay. Feel better? I, I don't know. I'm in a constant state of, you know, this. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. If there was one word is. to describe Paul Thurot's life, it would be disarray. I think, <laughs> yes, I think that's it's true. <laughs> we have a, a documentary film crew coming to my house on Saturday because my son, uh, who almost died when he was one and he's deaf now, the year that this happened, they created a vaccine for the thing that he got. And kids today, this will never happen to no them. No kidding. But, I did not know. Wow. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's like it's kind of a vaccine documentary. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there are people who don't believe in getting the kids vaccinated. Those people should be put on an island by themselves so they can die naturally. But anyway, we're going to be uh, – yeah. So you mentioned disarray, which is why I thought of mm -hmm. that because this house is <laughs> – I, I'm not oh. going to show how terrible my office is, but my office being a microcosm for the rest of the house is, uh, yeah. And, and tied to this, it's Wednesday, as you know. I mm -hmm. was having a conversation with my wife this morning, and she said, you know, it's Wednesday, right? And I was like, nope. Yeah. I thought it was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so disarray. You're right. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you need any Throat Premium merch that we can put in the background of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I'll hang it right. They're going to pick a place in the house to, I don't know, something that's... Uh, literally 14 people are coming here. 14. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. How many people do you need? What, am I going to meet the writer? The I mean, who's going... Like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, we show up with, I don't know, a, a microphone, a camera, and a box of worms and... yeah. Yeah, we make something happen. And then, I don't know. Yeah, so this is, it's odd. Anywho. <laughs> a little less exciting than my life. Whoops, well, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, look at that. Miracast recovered from that. That was actually, hmm. look at that. Sophisticated technology. That it's, this, is, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of the day now. What's that? Is that like a little picture-in-picture -picture mode? No, it's what you do, three fingers up on the trackpad. Mm. And it puts it oh, into this is oh, the timeline. This is the task, yeah, the, the task. The, the time. timeline that so many people are using. Um. <laughs> you just uh, like generated new numbers for this thing. They're going to be. We saw explosive growth in timeline over the week. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I have generated some uh, Windows uh, 10 MAUs lately because I've been mm -hmm. refreshing some old hardware to give to family and friends and. Some of these sure. things are kicking online with uh, pre-Windows 10 betas. <laughs> okay. So do you think we're going to hit that 700 million number anytime soon? Uh, I, yeah, man, yeah. I don't know <laughs> if you saw this. I think I don't even know if we talked about this, but the official number at the end of fiscal year 2018 was 694.4. Oh, million. I did not know that. That was in we're, the... Uh, it was in the proxy statement for oh, like a 10 Q or whatever. Yeah. For the earnings. So the, as of whatever, 630, there were 694 million. So I believe at ignite, you know, yet another Microsoft employee threw up one of those 700 million numbers and then somebody raised their hand and said, is it really 700 million? Cause you know, well actually they said, yeah, it was. So no, no, they, no, actually, they, re they retracted that. Oh, they retracted. <laughs> remember, remember this because they gave it to Mary Jo, Mary Jo. They're like, yeah, they, they told Mary Jo that it was 700 million, so she wrote this thing up, and then they had to reach back out to her, and they said, you know, it wasn't actually 700 million. That's unbelievable. I love this company. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the Xbox thing. I, I um, uh, This week, there's, because it's October, there's a bunch of horror game stuff going on in the Xbox mm -hmm. world, I'm sure, on PlayStation as well. And um, Microsoft, uh, last week, I think, added four new games to Xbox Game Pass that are kind of horror-related Mm -hmm. um, I was on Xbox One this morning, and I noticed there was a big, like, like this, you know, spook, what do they call it, like, spooktober, whatever the heck it's called. It doesn't matter. This is a sale. Um, some games are really cheap, like Friday the 13th was like $6. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered, because I was, I think I was, oh, no, it happened the other day, but they, they announced a bunch of uh, Valve games were auto-enhanced for Xbox One X. And so if you own these games, like, you get the HD graphics or 4K graphics, whatever it is. 
And I'm like, oh man, I got to go re-download this game because I, I played this game a million times, like mm-hmm. Half Life Two and the other stuff at Portal and so forth. I can't find it, and I'm, I realize like this game's so old, I actually probably bought it on disc. So I said, screw it, I'll buy the electronic version. That was twenty bucks. I go into the store on the console, and I've seen a, I saw a message I've never seen before. It says you actually have to go uh, and buy this on an Xbox 360, which I don't. I mean, I have in the cellar somewhere. Yeah. Or um, which I'm definitely not starting up again. Or uh, on Xbox.com. I said, okay, that's cool. I'll go to Xbox.com. And so orange box search. There it is. Click. Same message. You have to go on Xbox.com or you have to buy it on an Xbox 360. I'm like, I am on Xbox.com. <laughs> you can see it in the URL. So anyway, I, t- I tweeted about it. Rich Wood sent me a uh, – apparently you have to find the Xbox 360 listing and I had found the Xbox One listing. There was only one listing in the search results on the site. But no matter. Uh, it took me – all I'm trying to do is throw money at this company. Yeah. You know? And it's like, what is like, Microsoft, we made a store where you can't buy things and other success stories. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah my, my week's going great. <laughs> so I did get it. I mean, I'm downloading We're it. Good. And how cute. It's only five gigabytes. Remember those days? Yeah. It was a lot of space. You know? Yeah. That was, uh, now that's just known as a patch. I downloaded a day one patch for Black Ops. I believe it was 14 gigabytes. Mm-hmm. Actually, I could be downplaying that. It could have been 20 something gig, whatever it was. It was humongous. I had a friend who, uh, <laughs> you'll enjoy this, actually bought Black Ops, went to GameStop mm-hmm. on his way home from work, picked up the game, and he texted me. He said, Hey, he asked if I bought it. And he put the yeah. disc in, and it was a 50 gig download. Oh, I just, that's unbelievable. So maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was 49 or something. I, I, I just remember it being like, seriously, he, like you want to play this thing on the first day. Yep. I just, oh God. I mean, the whole Things digital change. download, I think was only 60. So yeah. It's like they taught, what, what do we do? Like change every single texture in the game. Mm-hmm. How could, how on earth could it be that big? I don't know, but he, <laughs> he's like, well, I guess I'm not maps are remakes. <laughs> like what, you know, anyway, it's okay. Yep. His text was, joke's on me, it's a 50 gig download. <laughs> yep. How big is Fortnite? Let's go look at that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the reason we ended up playing PUBG that night was because um, he couldn't play Black Ops. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't, actually, I don't think he ended up liking it. I wonder if he returned it. Wow. After all that. Yeah. Well, he wanted to play the BR mode and didn't play the yep. beta. And then he got in and realized that he just liked PUBG, which if you like PUBG, oh. you're not going to like Call of Duty. It's kind of one or the other because they're totally different games yeah i still have not spent a lot of time in that mode i gotta i don't know i'm just kind of working my way i've like finished one rifle <laughs> very you know, prestiged it up got the gold <clears throat> whatever it takes a long time you, you gotta a... work at it brad this is not it's not a play thing it's you know it's work you live a thrilling life <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure your wife was so proud of you when you mastered or prestige that weapon she said, good job, I think Paul. This is, I think I would call this part of my life that I leave private from her um, for both <laughs> of our sanities, you know? I hope my wife was ripping on me for playing Xbox. It's like, it's not work. It's research. I got to make sure this, this build of Xbox is stable so I sure. can tell the people. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, and I'm, I'm, I would say the same thing of any gambling type addiction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can stop anytime I want. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. So other things actually on the agenda today. So this has been like a privacy week because Google is announcing some privacy stuff. Tim Cook went on a little little rage online about privacy stuff. Uh, Firefox 63 introduced uh, enhanced tracking protection. And um, yeah, every every day this week has had a theme, sort of, sort of. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I actually switched to Firefox. I'm gonna I'm gonna run it for a couple days. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I will. I will tell you that it's browsers mean nothing to me anymore now that I use one password. Yeah. I, you know, so it's interesting you say that. I mean, I, I have a peculiar requirement. I, I like to use the web apps that fire mm-hmm. uh, that uh, Chrome lets you do. And it's yeah. I like the way it works in windows. It's nice. It works the same way in uh, Chrome OS. I don't really use that obviously, but will someday work on Linux and the Mac as well. It's, it's mm-hmm. interesting to me. So even if I wanted to use Firefox, like I'd still be using Chrome too, and it's kind of goofy to run two pretty big right. browsers uh, side by side. So I'm kind of I'm stuck is maybe not the wrong the right word, but I'm 
you know, I'm stuck. Yeah, no, that that is one of the problems is that because um, I use TweetDeck in a Chrome wrapper and I also use Google um, Calendar in a Chrome wrapper. So I'm still using Chrome. I mean, I can't get, a, get away from that until Firefox or Edge, for that matter, lets you just do the same thing that Chrome does, run it in a windowless browser or whatever yeah, it's called. I kind of expect that, right? I, I Although, well, actually, uh, Internet Explorer used to let you do this. Well, used to let you do um, it was a just a shortcut, right? But you could <laughs> save it to the taskbar, and it would come up yeah. in a kind of a, a light browser window. It wasn't the you know not mm-hmm. as good as Chrome, but not not bad. It's something that Edge does not do today. Correct. Um, that would make a big difference. I'd love. I mean, the built-in browser has some huge mm-hmm. advantages. It does, <clears throat> obviously. So it'd be neat if it did that, but it doesn't. Yeah, and that's probably the last thing holding me to Chrome, and to everyone wondering why. I yeah. switched to Firefox one. I just switched things for no good reason. The wind changed direction, so I guess today's that day. Um, you know what? But, though uh, I don't downplay what you're doing because no, no, it's I actually big. think this is an important uh, role that we can play, and people like us, you know, mm-hmm. I constantly reevaluate things, and, and you yep. do too, obviously. And I, it, it's healthy because you know when you get into kind of a monoculture about stuff, if you just like I'm just using Chrome and I'm, I'm going to stop thinking about it. Um, you are not aware of the advances that are occurring elsewhere, you know, and if you Mm -hmm. want to claim that Chrome is the best browser or Windows is the best operating system or whatever it is, you need to actually use the other stuff. If you don't, your opinion is not valid. And, um, you know, if, if the worst thing that happens is you go through a month or whatever it is with Firefox, you're like, yeah, you know, like, you know, here are the reasons I, you know, I can't make it work. Mm -hmm. At least now you have an educated opinion about it. Yeah. And for those asking, because uh, Twitter was like, why aren't you using Edge? Uh, the, the, the real answer is actually because 1Password supports taking over the password management in Chrome and Firefox. It does not. It has an extension for Edge, yeah. but it's not quite the same. What is super convenient about 1Password is that you can do the same thing with uh, Chrome where you just double click in the little login prompt and it, it actually drops down your passwords. And so until Edge has that functionality with 1Password, I'm not going to go that route, but Firefox does. And so here we are. A lot of little things like that, um, and ultimately, you know, when people ask why aren't you using Edge, I mean, it's always going to be a variant of what you just said. I mean, this is not as important as your example, but mm-hmm. I use this uh, plugin called Momentum, which is just a nice homepage. It's a pretty photo, but it also yeah. has a list of the links I use most often. And you can replace the new tab page on both Chrome and Firefox with the Momentum, and I love it. And this is one mm-hmm. of the things I auto-install every time I use these browsers. Cannot do this on Edge. In fact... The way Edge handles like new, the new tab page or the home page is, is so broken and old-fashioned and weird, I don't understand it. But this is kind of an extreme example of one way. It just, it just falls totally short. And what are we at on the fourth or fifth version of this thing? I mean, like, I, they need to – this is so much to be done, you know, yeah. to get this thing up to snuff. Yeah. So it'll be um, – I don't know. I mean, it's – there wasn't a whole lot holding me back uh, from Firefox before. It was just more of a convenience thing, mostly because of being able to wrap up apps in a Chromeless browser or whatever you yeah. want to call that. Yep. It, it's very, it's very nice to be able to do that. And the fact that you can't in other browsers is somewhat frustrating. But it's it's actually doubly frustrating on Windows 10 because the operating system supports progressive web apps natively, mm-hmm. and so this. This should just be a feature of the OS. You know, you should be able to go to any web page in Edge, do what you're saying. It shouldn't have to be a progressive web app either. But if it is, it can give you, uh, you know, the advantages of those apps like offline support mm-hmm. and so forth. But um, I, I just, you know, if Microsoft wants to actually curb behavior uh, usage on other browsers yep. uh, and wants people to actually use Edge, I mean, I, you know, making it a central part of the apps platform might be not a horrible idea, guys. Mm-hmm. And Again, this has been something Chrome has done for years. Yep. It just keeps getting better. Like today, these things are like at their apps, you know. Yeah. Or a lot of them are. Um, it's a much more seamless experience. But it's, always, it's had this thing, the capability for years and years. I feel like Edge is heading down that route because they're, they're doing certain things that are right, but yeah. they're all behind the scenes. And they're not real, I was going to say, present to the user currently, much like what yeah. we're talking about with Chrome. I think that, yeah, so I think you're right. And, um, you know, Microsoft and Google kind of approached PWAs and how you get them on the system from different directions. And uh, because Google started with Android, it's one of those things where you, you go to a PWA in the, in the browser and it says, hey, do you want to put mm-hmm. this in your home screen? And you don't really have to think much about whether it's a real app or a sort of app or a shortcut. It doesn't really matter. You know, when you run that thing, it, it is an app, by the way, but it runs as sort of a standalone thing just like it does in Windows. Um, in Windows with Microsoft, the way they looked at it was, 
we want to make these PWAs a, a first class citizen in the store. They're going to mm-hmm. be apps, you know. So when you run, when you load up the Twitter app to the user, it's just an app, which is great. I like the yeah. the fact they're obscuring the nonsense that's happening on the back end. And in the future, they're going to add the ability to find those things with search results. So if you search for Twitter mm-hmm. for Windows 10 or whatever, and uh, Bing. Uh, you'll be able to click on a link and the app will come up, but you don't have to go through the store. But I think they're both going to do what the other's doing. And so Google will add PWAs to their store, stores, you know, Google Play Store. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Microsoft will add the ability to just pin like we're talking about. But my God, like, let's go, guys. It's like it's like 2018. Come on. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And um, yeah, the other... <laughs> This is the most petty of reasons why I switch too. Mm-hmm. Um, if you use in Windows 10 where you can apply the color of your theme that you pick or whatever to the title bars, yep, it looks terrible on Chrome. It looks. <laughs> See, I actually like that. You mean because like, it's in the blank area where the tabs are? Yeah, but it's they don't do a good job of changing the text color. Uh, Firefox does a really good job of this, and so, so like I, I use like a dark purple. Yeah, and so if I use you a do, dark gray. Well, yeah, change it to a color and then open Chrome. Dark gray would look perfectly fine because Google already uses a gray. But, uh, yeah. The, the funny thing, is, I mean, for whatever, yeah, I, I actually, I have these, um, I guess they're like toolbar buttons or whatever that are kind of gray. It'd be kind of interesting if those could be colored to match the theme. Um, normally, before this capability in Chrome, I actually did not turn on colors in the title bars. Mm. And I actually did it. I'm doing it now because I like the way it looks in Chrome, and I use Chrome a lot. But um, mm-hmm. And I use the dark theme, too. Speaking of which, have you, uh, do you use a dark theme in Windows 10? Because I haven't checked this yet, but apparently the new version of Firefox supports that natively as well, which is something Chrome doesn't do. I don't, actually. Okay. I, don't, I don't use the dark. The only place, I, I totally get why people want a dark theme. That's perfectly fine. Everybody has their own reason. The only place that I really would like one is on my phone. Um, because yeah. usually I, unless some news breaks or whatever, my, I usually shut my PC off around seven, seven thirty or whatever, right? I go eat dinner. I leave it on in case there's anything to finish up yep. and then yep. I turn it off. And so I don't use it much late at night. It's mostly just my phone. And so, yeah, same here. I, I, I enabled at night mode, whatever they call that now, uh, on everywhere on all devices, including windows. Um, but I don't find myself in front of a computer that much at night. There, I mm-hmm. I actually don't think the dark mode of Windows 10 looks very good, but it does make the whole screen uh, darker, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like it's better on my eyes, you know. So even though it's kind of unattractive, it, and even though a lot of the things I'm looking at, like a email application that's lit up my face probably, or um, you know a, a website or something, which is also going to be predominantly white, is it, it it creates kind of a glaring difference between like the surrounding UI and the thing you're looking at. Um, I still, uh, you know. I don't know. I, I, like I said, I don't think, I don't think it looks good, but I feel like it's better for my eyes kind of. Yeah. It probably um, so I've is. been, I've been using it. I mean, uh, you know, begrudgingly, I guess. I think, I think you, that's how you use everything. <laughs> Let's just be yeah, honest. But a little bit of real, like self-loathing and remorse. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's a whole agenda for this show, I think somewhere, but, um, just went off the rails as always. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much par for the course, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'd be curious to see if Google's privacy stuff, but oh, that's what actually got me into Firefox was their privacy tracking. That was the ability yeah. to just to shut everything off and kind of take back control a little bit, um, I think is what. Yeah, I think pushed um, Mozilla's role, uh, there were other companies doing this too. I think Brave mm-hmm. kind of made, maybe falls in this category, but in Opera probably. Uh, but but Mozilla has kind of become the Apple of the browser world, you know? Yeah. And they're very overt about the fact that we're not trying to monetize you. Although they do ask me for money all the time, by the way. Um <laughs> but you see, know, as I'm, far as I'm, the brow- I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would much rather be given the option, it, just like any app mm-hmm. that I download that has ads, and you can buy it for a dollar ninety nine and and get rid of it. I always pay that. I always do. I, I just wrote this in the. I wrote an Apple editorial this morning um, that was actually inspired by the Tim Cook thing, but relates to something I said last week when mm-hmm. we were in Dublin. I was doing a Q and A with the audience at Windows Weekly, and someone asked about which American tech company would be the most likely to fall to the GDPR first, you know, yeah. in other words, violate it. And I said, well, Google, you know, Mary Jo and I both Google, obviously. Mm-hmm. And we were about to move on to the next thing. I said, you know, just as an interesting aside here, the company that's least likely to follow this is Apple. In fact, one of the things that's really unique about Apple is that they would look at the GDPR and say, okay, here are the requirements we need to meet in Europe. Let's exceed those mm-hmm. for privacy, right? 
And then let's do that worldwide. You know, that's the Apple approach. They've kind of made yeah. privacy a feature or even a product, you know, that one of the many things you get by buying into the Apple ecosystem is they're not going to do what Facebook does. They're not going to do what Google does. They're not going to sell your information. You're not going to see creepy ads over on the side that are exactly what you're searching for or whatever. Mm -hmm. Although, actually, if you're using Google, of course you are. But, um, and I, you know, look, I have my complaints about uh, Apple like I have my complaints about any company, I guess. But um, I really think this is a smart strategy. And it's timely in the sense that this is a big concern today. Obviously, the GDPR just happened this year. And, you know, it's, uh, privacy is kind of top of mind now, especially with all the AI nonsense that's happening. But I, I think this is a viable long-term strategy, you know. They're so serious about it that they make their their products less powerful. Yeah, because they refuse to violate your your privacy. It sounds goofy. It sounds like a, a losing strategy. Mm -hmm. I think it's it might be the smartest thing they've ever done. Yeah, well, it, and it's they're they're limiting what other competitors can do as well because a company yeah. like Google can't because that's that is their bottom line mm -hmm. is is advertising. Right. Uh, Microsoft has a little bit in that with Bing, but that's not a majority of their revenue by any by yeah, any means. It never will be, and and it shouldn't be. I mean, they're not. I was gonna say, they're not a search company, 10, but and and how horrible their attempts at monetizing this mm -hmm. thing have been, right? Yeah, you know, in the in the past, they could rely on some number of users upgrading to a new version of Windows every so often. Now it's a bigger user base, but they're super unengaged. Mm -hmm. They're not upgrading to new computers all the time, and they're just using the same thing for a long, long time. Plus, Windows 10 is Windows 10. Like, you just get free upgrades. So, you know, how do you monetize that user base? It turns out you kind of can't. Th yeah. There's a couple of things you can do, like storage on OneDrive and Office 365, but there's only some percentage of the uh, population that's going to go for that. And their attempts at, you know, putting crapper in the system or advertising the system have been huge failures, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's just different. Apple, on the other hand, has its loyal user base, 1.3 billion people on uh, iOS devices. And um, they can't wait to throw more money at this company in the form of uh, subscriptions, uh, in the form of uh, peripherals, things like the Apple Watch, the Apple TV, the HomePod, whatever it is. Um, so even though iPod sales have probably slowed down from the perspective of a user upgrading every so often, right? Mm -hmm. They still get all, they have all this, they have an engaged user base that's throwing money at them. Yep. So they have found a way to monetize this thing in ways that make sense. Uh, yep. and, and that don't, you know, and you can make the argument as a consumer, we can say, look, these things are expensive, maybe, or, you know, whatever. But do those people who buy those things derive value from those purchases? I mean, obviously, obviously. Yeah. It's, um, privacy is one of those things that I don't think will ever go out of fashion. As long as you right. are on the right side of that, you're going to continue to reap, um, reap I, your rewards. Yeah, Tim Tim Cook is not a product visionary like Steve Jobs was, but I think the one thing he has been truly visionary about, I assume we, I, we have to give him credit for this, is the privacy thing. I mean, mm -hmm. this is like the most genius decision he's ever made, really. Um, and this is how a company like Apple, who was the, which was the first company to hit a trillion dollar valuation, could hit a two trillion dollar valuation. I mean, yeah. it's not going to be from another hardware device. It's it's going to be from this stuff, you know. I think yep. I, I, you know, I, I, I look, like I said, I have all kinds of complaints about Apple, but uh, this thing that they're doing around privacy is super smart. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I can't disagree with it. So you got anything else for today, Mr. Orange box? <laughs> I am going to play orange box as soon as I get off of this thing. Um, no, I, I, I'm working on, so Gardner came out with a report that was kind of interesting about, and I can't see the report, but I, what I can mm -hmm. see is a video they made with Google they compared all the major platforms. And if you look at the most recent versions of Android, iOS, and Windows, and then the, there are some permutations of that, like uh, the version of Windows that's on a Surface Pro uh, because of some of the security hardware that's there, or uh, the knock stuff that Samsung makes. Um, guess which one of those is the most secure, Brad? Would you have guessed <laughs> the least likely candidate? Um, do I, I, what, I don't know. It's Android. Really? I. I I know. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need to really look into this. Um, I've watched the video twice. I've taken some notes. Uh, there's a chart they provide which explains how they score. Um, and actually, I'll just I'll bring it up real quick because it's kind of interesting. Like, um, They have things like uh, biometrics, encryption on by default, app isolation, OS updates, security updates, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole list of things. Um, if you if you kind of score those things and, and give a higher score to the 
places where play, you know the companies or the platforms are strong. Mm-hmm. Android comes out on top. And by the way, yeah. iOS comes out on the bottom. And I, <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't think anyone would have scored it this way. In fact, I think you, most people probably would have reversed the scores. Yeah. So I need to kind of examine this. Interesting. How about you? Um, well, I'm foiled again getting my hair cut this morning because it was too long of a lie. We may go down yep. that road this afternoon. We will see. And, um, yeah, not just, I got to finish this book up. That's, yes. I got to, well, there's, there's to still some it. writing to be done, but as of mm-hmm. right now with images, it's 158 pages, but that will flux. Mm-hmm. So yep. it's getting there. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So, all right, folks. Well, that wraps it up for today. We will be back tomorrow at uh, usual time. And have yourselves a wonderful Wednesday, and we'll catch you next time.